you can contact them about uh, purchasing a manual. So that's what we are, are, are teaching from for the next few weeks. Um, like I said, the sessions I project will probably be about six, um, maybe maybe more if needed, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm projecting at least six sessions. And so we are teaching from the manual um, what God says about the spiritual gifts, manifestations of the spiritual gifts. So let's go ahead and get started. We won't be before you long. We'll probably be done by eight tonight. We don't want to uh, take too much of your time. But the history of the Corinthian church, let's go from the beginning. Uh, and let's talk about the history. Number one, the Corinthian church. Who are they? What was, what's the significance of the Corinthian church? Number one, they're known for its holy living. Uh, and why is this huh? not known? I'm sorry, not known for uh, its holy living. They, uh, were, they were not living a holy and righteous lifestyle. However, why is that significant? Paul spent more, over a year with the Corinthians. He spent a very long time, um, most of his uh, journey here uh, with the Corinthian church. Although lacking in morality, the church at Corinth didn't lack in spiritual gifts. So what is the, what did the Bible say? What did Paul say to the Corinthians? In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, not uh, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet. Now are you able, for you are yet carnal. He said in verse 3, you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, and you are not carnal and walk as men. He said, for while one said, I am of Paul, and another I am of Apollos, yet are you not carnal? I'll keep trying to go to the next slide. So the history. We get, let's move forward. In the uh, in the Corinth, the pagan temples temples were known for their sacred prostitutes. All right, they 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 were the Corinthians. They got saved, uh, and however, they were lacking in the teaching. They were lacking in substance and understanding um, of holy living and holy righteous living. Um, and so they were never taught, and they began to bring these same practices that they used to have over into the church. For example, in the manual, it, it's given us an example of one member took his father's wife and didn't care to repent. Another example is they used communion to get drunk. Uh, number, another one is they used freedom in Christ as a freedom to sin. How often do we see that today? A lot of times, I, I don't want to talk, I don't want to be biased or, or, or try to compare apples to oranges, but let's call a spade a spade, if you will. Uh, a lot of times we're looking, uh, if you look at that statement, use freedom in Christ as a freedom to sin. How often do we hear that dynamic or do we witness that example of individuals um, who say, you know, we're living in, in, the, in the moment of grace now. God has forgiven us. So I, I have the, uh, you know, the opportunity to do whatever I need. As long as I make it to church house and I ask for forgiveness, God is going to forgive me. God is, I, I can do whatever I want to do, live the way I want to live. And God, God is obligated to forgive me. A lot of people live, are living like this. So they had that mentality, mentality that, uh, Thinking that, okay, the, the Bible says, hey, we are free in Christ. Uh, now that means we are free to live the way we want to live. And they also continued uh, with Greek philosophy. Okay. Now, understand this. Here we are. We're still uh, establishing the, the, the context of, of, of our history. Spiritual gifts are not something for the super mature in Christ as we may have been taught. The Corinthians needed spiritual gifts because they were carnal-minded, right? 
Mature Christians do not seek after the gifts. Instead, gifts seek after them. Let's backtrack a little bit. Let's think about that statement. Because at first, when I read that first line, I said, wait, I said, well, this kind of troubled me. But then I started to understand when I thought about the concept that the Corinthians needed spiritual gifts because they were carnal minded. And the mature Christians did not seek after the gifts. Instead, the gifts, the gifts sought after them. When you are mature in Christ, when you are mature in Christ, when you are living for God, when you are doing, when you are seeking after him, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all this righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Perhaps that scripture is talking about these gifts, the, the, the opportunity to operate in those gifts. Perhaps it's talking not just about our bills and our, our issues and, and things being fixed and the material wants that we desire and all of those wonderful beautiful blessings of, of of the most high but god is saying i'm going to if i'm going to fill you with more power more more anointing to prophesy more anointing to heal the sick more more uh, more grace to to pray and see lives recover based on the gifts that i have placed inside of you the corinthians they needed these spiritual gifts. So know that are mature in Christ. They're not looking for their gifts. They're looking for God. They're looking for more of his power, more of his anointing, more of God's presence. We have to keep chasing after him every moment, every day to understand who he is, not what he can do. Understand who God is, not what he can do, right? So Jesus operated in the fullness of God he did not operate in the gifts. He operated in the fullness. And so here, here's the purpose of this, of this lesson, of these, of these next few sessions we're talking about, the spiritual gifts. Gifts are not, uh, they are for us to use when we operate to the full capacity of what God has placed inside of us. And we are expected to do the same. Jesus didn't, Jesus wasn't chasing after these gifts. It was in him. He was operating in, in the gifts, in God. All right, remember, and here's the most important thing in the, in the manual, it was, it was describing that, remember, operating in the gifts mean nothing if you don't operate in love. What did Jesus operate mostly in? Uh, what did Jesus operate in? Question mark. He operated, love, love. he operated in love. He operated in the fullness of God's love. Here we go, guys. Let's stop before we teach anything, before we teach you about any gift that you already have. We want to teach you to seek after God. And when you find what you need, and when you get to that place in God, share that with everyone you see in the world. Every single person, share it. How with love? Now we can have a we can have a, a deep discussion and, and 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 to conversation about that alone. We can have a whole we can spend a whole hour on on evangelism and, and doing that in love because when you are evangelizing in 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 the purest format format and formation of love and operating in God's fullness. God would download and, and place every, every gift, every need for that person, for that situation. Mm -hmm. The motive, look at the last statement. The motive is love. When you operate in love, operating in gifts will be easy. When you operate in love, operating in gifts become easy. So let, I'm, can we establish that precedent? that that's the most important thing here? First Corinthians, now I'm gonna stop after this next slide. First Corinthians chapter number 12. Oh, I'm gonna stop after this. Um, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant, for ye know that ye are Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols. He said, Paul called them dumb. Them idols are dumb. Even as you are, even as you are led, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. 
and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Now there are diversities of the gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. Here, listen to that last statement. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. Stop right there and think about that. Every person that is filled with the, with the presence of God, with the fullness of God, you have the opportunity to operate in with every gift. Purpose of the gift. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Henderson. That was a wonderful introduction. Okay, so now, now we're going to get into, I'm um, going to deep, dive a little bit deeper um, concerning the gifts, okay? So I do want to say first that Pastor Yopi, he actually mentioned in the manual that um, the word gifts is not even mentioned in the Greek. So I wanted to share it with you because I thought it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it says, the verse says, now concerning spirituals, mm, let's try that again. Mm -hmm. Now concerning spirituals mm -hmm. or now concerning spirituality or now concerning spiritual activity. Mm -hmm. So just that phrase alone lets us know that when it's talking about operating in the manifestation of the gifts, right mm -hmm. um it's not anything that we do of ourselves it's something that's done completely through the leading of the holy spirit okay mm -hmm. okay so let's get into the purpose the purpose of the gifts um at the end it says to profit with all and so we looked that up and in the blue letter bible um uh, strong's g4 851 says that um profit with all is the word sincero Amen. Sincero, which means to bear or bring together, to bear together, or at the same time to carry with others, mm. to collect or contribute in order to help, Ooh. to help so, be profitable or be expedient. Wow. So that means that the gift of the spirit or the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in um, one of these fashions mm -hmm. is not meant to exalt the person, right? Oh. It, that's not the purpose at all. The whole purpose is to help advance the kingdom, right? It's to help um, better our brothers and sisters, okay? So if at any time you see somebody who decides they want to, uh, they give a word or something, and then they want to say, oh, I did this, that, and the other, then that, they're not operating from the right spirit. Because Adam just mentioned on the, on the past slide mm -hmm. that it's all supposed to come from love, right? It's all supposed to bring glory to God, okay? okay? Also, I need to say that um, one manifestation is not meant to be viewed more spiritual than another okay. because they all come from the same spirit. Okay. What does the word say? It says, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God, which worketh all in all, right? Say all of these different administrations, diversities of gifts, but it all comes in the same spirit. So that means if you have the Holy Spirit, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, then that means that these gifts, um, they can manifest within us as well, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's all for the advancement of the kingdom and not for personal gain, okay? All right, so let's keep moving. Isn't that interesting, though? A lot of people, um, a lot of people desire to prophesy because it, mm -hmm. it looks better. Do you ever see somebody that, you know, want to be, prophets and want to be, you know, want to have a moment, you know, uh, to declare what, what say of the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, because it, I guess they feel like it comes with better prestige mm. or they, they think that they're more special because God speaks to them <laughs> when he, he wants to speak to all of us. I, I'm so glad you say that because I was just looking at the manual again okay. and Pastor Yobi, he actually, um, brings up excuse me, he brings out a sacred cow. And that sacred cow that says each person has his or her own gift mm -hmm. 
Only special people can use multiple gifts. Only special people. Do you see that anywhere in the Bible? Nowhere. No. no. I, don't, I don't see it. I don't see, I don't see it. Okay. <laughs> so that means that all of the gifts are within us. We it's have the spirit. Show. It's a TV show. It's an Adam and Gail show. For the, for the Lord. For the Lord. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so... Um, you don't have to be special. I mean, we all are special because we're made in his, oh, we are made in his image. We are made in his image. Uh -oh. So that means if it's in him, it's in us. Listen. We have his likeness, okay? We have his qualities. Uh -huh. So that means if he can do it, we can do it. Can do because it who is in us? He is in yeah. us. Everybody is somebody in the Lord's church. Everybody is somebody in the Lord's church. And who is Lord? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> We need to stop playing around. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh, but I did. I had, I had to make this note because y'all notice how he said, um, I would not have you ignorant, uh -huh. right? So I looked up that word ignorant in the, on the Blue Letter Bible, okay? Strong's G49, and it says to be yeah. ignorant, not to know, not to understand, unknown to err or sin through mistake to be wrong. Wow. To be wrong. Why? Why is it that? Because you know what? A lot of times we find ourselves making mistakes or saying the wrong thing simply because of things that we've heard people say, mm. right? Or a misunderstanding of something, mm -hmm. which is also why it's good to study the scripture. Yeah. Study the scripture and get the real context, get the real meaning. Because I can be honest and say for a long time, I just only thought, oh, I can only have this one gift or, you know, I might got these two or three gifts. But I'm reading the Bible where it says I got all the gifts all of it. because I have the spirit. Right. And so whenever, whenever we are ministering to somebody, as we operate in the fullness, whatever a person needs at that particular time, that's the gift that's going to manifest itself in that particular time. Exactly. Okay. So it's not like I owe, I only have um, the gift of the word of knowledge. So if somebody needs wisdom, then I can't give them wisdom. Mm -hmm. No. Whatever is needed, that's how the Holy Spirit is going to manifest itself at that particular time. But we're not pursuing gifts. The thing is, yes. you got to remember that we're not pursuing gifts. We're pursuing God. Yes. And so, uh, you know, I'm walking, I'm walking, doing a morning walk that I usually do every morning, or I'm going grocery shopping and I'm, I'm running to somebody. And it, when we walk in the Spirit, when we live in the mm -hmm. spirit. We live in the spirit. That's it. That's, that's the thing. When we live in the spirit, mm -hmm. what we do aligns with what God wants for us. Yes. When we're seeking after God and seeking more of his glory to be revealed in, in, in us, in us mm -hmm. for him. That's when we find what, what uh, revelation of what is needed. And so you, you, you operate, you tap into exactly what God is going to download into you. But you, it, you have to live in that spirit, guys. Mm -hmm. You got to live in this thing. It's a lifestyle. This ain't no, this ain't a moment. Mm -hmm. These aren't moments of salvation. This is a lifestyle of salvation. Of holiness. Okay. Okay. Oh, and I also want to add to it, this just came to mind, um, that when we are living a lifestyle of holiness, um, and we know that that is a lifestyle of self-denial. So that means that when we go out, even when we're working on jobs, yes, we're working a job, but even while working, we're still ministering. We're still being a light. We're still being an example. Yeah. And so at any moment, the Holy Spirit can step in and say, this is needed for this particular person. Exactly. So we have to always be willing and ready to allow Holy Spirit to use us. Okay. No days off. And listen, that's a lesson we're all learning. No mm -hmm. days off. We're always a living vessel ready to be used by the Holy Spirit Amen. to show love and to advance the kingdom. Okay. Amen. I think um, that I hear, um, I want to say it might've been on Tuesday or y'all might've talked about it in a different class talking about taking, it's about the influence Amen. and um, taking territory. Okay. All of this is for advancing the kingdom. Okay. Amen. All right. So let's keep moving. Is my computer one. Okay. Here we go. All right. So manifestations or gifts of the spirit given by the spirit as we said before this is not anything that we do of ourselves but it's by the spirit we have the word of wisdom word of knowledge faith gifts of healing working of miracles prophecy discerning of spirits diverse kinds of tongues interpretation of tongues okay these are all of the manifestations of the spirit given by 
given by the spirit mm -hmm. that are mentioned in first Corinthians chapter 12 verses 8 through 10 and so tonight we're going to talk about the word of wisdom okay so um chapter 12 verse 8 it says for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom okay strong's g3056 the word is lagos mm -hmm. and i hope i'm saying that correctly all right, the definition, well, a couple of the definitions that stuck out to me for this particular lesson um, are a word uttered by a living voice embodies a conception um, or idea, the sayings of God, of the moral precepts given by God, what is declared, a thought, declaration, aphorism, a weighty saying, a dictum, a maxim, okay? Mm -hmm. And because... I don't know what an aphorism, a dictum, or maxim is. I looked them up. Not for y'all, but for myself. And I thought I'd share it with you. Okay. Okay. So a dictum is a formal pronouncement from an authoritative source, a short statement that expresses a general truth or a principle. Mm -hmm. And that authoritative source, that one really stuck out to me, that piece of the definition. A maxim is a short, pithy statement expressing a general truth or a rule of conduct mm -hmm. and the word pithy is a concise concise is short brief but it's straight to the point mm -hmm. forcefully expressive so notice notice these common themes here you got authoritative you got forcefully okay they have an aphorism which is a pithy observation that contains a general truth right so we're talking about the word of wisdom right so notice we already said that this particular um, gift is given by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's given by the Spirit. So that means when the Lord downloads into you and the Holy Spirit downloads into you a word of wisdom for yourself or for somebody else, okay, it's, it's, it's coming from an authoritative source. It's coming directly from the King himself, mm -hmm. okay? And then the wisdom, it says Strong's G4678, Sophia, okay? Wisdom is supreme intelligence such as belongs to God, who is God, that authoritative source, okay? Mm -hmm. A broad, broad and full of intelligence, use of knowledge of very diverse matters. How is it diverse, diverse matters? It's because it's not, we don't know anything about it until he downloads it into us, okay? Um, the knowledge and practice of the requisites for godly and upright living, okay? And the word requisites is a thing that is necessary for the achievement of a specified end mm. specified end and what is a specified end one is to advance the kingdom mm -hmm. and one is for us to live holy and it's for us to share love and it's for us to do everything that the lord has called us to okay so when the lord when, the, when lord holy spirit all in one when they download a word of wisdom into you for somebody else there is a reason for it you may not understand it but when you give it to the person, oh, they go understand it, okay? Because it's coming from the Lord. It's not coming from you, okay? Mm. All right, let's keep going. Y'all got questions? I'm sorry. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't think to do that. No, I don't Amen. have any questions. I'm enjoying it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I wanted, should we, I wanted to express this. Go ahead. Because I want us to understand, as we're going to go through these um these understandings and no learning about these spiritual gifts so we can operate in them more freely i want us to understand what they are not as well we need to differentiate what they are and what they are not and so um you know the, our manual from our pastors have are very very um good at uh, making that distinction mm -hmm. so we, so we know how to operate in them and so what is the word of wisdom when one thing that we need to understand is that wisdom is God's knowledge applied to a situation. It's not fortune telling. All right. Um, word of wisdom is, is not something like a hurricane is going to hit your house and three children will die. That's, that's not word of wisdom. Word, wisdom gives us instruction for what we need in a specific situation. Amen. 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 
Okay. Go ahead, take it so, over. all right. So the gift of the word of wisdom transcends any human genius or insight. So as you said before, it's not coming from us. It's coming from the Holy Spirit. It is a supernatural gift of God that only the Holy Spirit can impart. Okay. And this is from um, a commentator named Don Stewart. It mm -hmm. is the application of knowledge, which is what um, uh, Mr. Adam just said. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another commentator, he states that some, some Christians link this spiritual gift of the word of wisdom exclusively with the apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. As a result, many believe this gift or manifestation no longer operates. Mm -hmm. Can somebody say that is a whole lot? That That's a lot. Man. Because why? The Holy Spirit is still alive and active in this world, mm -hmm. which means so is this particular manifestation. Right. Okay? If it's needed at any, at any particular moment, Holy Spirit is going to download it, and it is our responsibility to speak what the Holy Spirit has given us, if He tells us to, or when He tells us to. Amen. Amen. All right, and then so um, Chuck Smith he said it is um, the word of wisdom is an anointing of the Holy Spirit, which is exercised when issues arise. Yeah. And when there are important decisions that must be, made, must be made, it is that imparting of the word of wisdom that is just, that just is so right that it brings divided factions together. Mm. So as long as if at a particular point, somebody may be, say for instance, Adam and I may be in conversation and um, there is something that maybe I'm trying to figure out a problem or there's a solution that I need to something or I'm trying to make a decision mm -hmm. and then automatically the Lord may download um, something specific that I may need to help me figure out that problem or I may need to help me move forward to that next step mm -hmm. okay it's not because of his own wisdom but it's because the Holy Spirit downloaded that into him for my specific need okay so that's what that mean by it being just so right that it brings divided factions together, okay? Mm. It brings clarity, all mm. right? Um, and then also, like you said before, the difference in the, well, we'll get, to, get into word of knowledge later, but mm -hmm. the word of wisdom is, like it says here, it says it is the application of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So knowledge, you're just knowing something, yeah. okay? Holy Spirit, he just told you something about me, right? Sure. But the difference is you're going to give me something that I can actually apply to my situation. It gives you a plan of action. A plan of action. Plan yeah. of action. When you give word of wisdom, you're giving someone a plan of action. For example, if, if someone came to me and says, the Lord sees what you're doing. He knows your heart. He heard your last prayer. He wants you to fast for three days and study on, study every scripture on healing. That's instruction. That's an application of the knowledge that was just given to me. Mm -hmm. God saw me, he heard my prayer. And so now he wants me to fast for three days. This is coming from God. This is not an opinion. This is coming directly from God saying, fast for three days and study the scriptures on healing. That's a word of wisdom because mm -hmm. now I'm giving, I'm giving you instruction. I'm giving you an applicable uh, resource to get to the next phase of, of what you need to do where you need to be, where you need to go. When God says he wants you to become a vegan. <laughs> you know, God says, I want you to, to, uh, to, uh, to cut out soda for 30 days, 90 days. For 365 days, he wants you to, be, to, to only drink water. Who are we? Hello, somebody. That's, that's applicable, that's applicable um, action that's an action that you can apply to yourself to get to where god wants you to be mm -hmm. god is going to give you instruction through the word of wisdom through the word of wisdom and, and honestly just just personal the, go back to the page yeah. um i just want to say that um and the the lord will he would even give you well i believe that and pastor yofi you can correct me if i'm wrong um that the lord would give you a word of wisdom even for yourself yes would you would you say that's correct yeah um yeah yeah, because um, I, I was going to say that there is something that Holy Spirit actually addressed within me where he told me that I had to actually become a vegan um, just for holistic health purposes. So it's like he's healing me holistically mm -hmm. um, or, you know, physically through what I'm eating. 
So he just changed my whole lifestyle. That's right. Um, in order to address certain issues. Okay. That's right. Um, but I do want to read this this part at the end of page eleven of the manual, and it says, "In a word of wisdom, the speaker should give supernatural instruction of how to apply God's knowledge in order to grow closer to God." Words of wisdom do not give a doom and gloom message. Mm. Even if danger is close, a word of wisdom would tell a person what God wants the person to do mm -hmm. to draw near to his salvation. Okay. Let me tell you, give you an example. Can I give an example? Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Before my mom passed away, I knew she, she was going to pass away a year before she actually died. Um, because I had a dream, a significant dream, and I, I, I was confused about this, you know, experience. And so what happened was I called, um, it was, I think it was Elder at the time, um, but I called Bishop Carter and I, I, I explained to him the dream and I said, I don't understand, I need, I need some insight. Uh, and so the revelation of the dream was that I needed to go see my mother and I needed to see her quickly. So I called my brother. I said, we have to drop to Tennessee as soon as possible. Ironically, my mother was in the hospital for probably the, the 1,000th 1, 1, time. Um, so I'm like, okay, let me, you know, my brother and I, my wife, we got in the car, we drove, what, how long was it? 15 Too hours, long. 15, 16 hours to Tennessee to go see my mom. And I get, you know, I see her, everything's good. We, we take her home. I get back home and, um, I, you know, I called my bishop or called elder at the time. And I said, hey, I went to go see my mom. She's doing well. And he said, the Lord saw exactly what you were doing. He was with you as you were driving to Tennessee. He was with you on the way back. He was covering you. He said, because you obeyed the voice of the Lord, because you obeyed what it was that you were supposed to do, you gave her, um, you gave her more time. You gave her more time. God has, um, not you gave her more time, but I'm giving her extra time based on what I what I was supposed to do because what if I was just about to start school at that time I think we were, it was in August um, we were about to start uh, a new school year and I told my principal I said I, I have to go to Tennessee I know school's about to start I, 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 but I really feel pressed to go visit my mother she's not doing well and you know I, I could have found every excuse not to go because of the distance the money but I obeyed the word of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I, my, my mother was given another year. Amazing, right? So when you obey the voice of the Lord, he will reward you. And, and, I, and that's important. Like once, once a word of wisdom is given, it's important to obey. It's important to mm. follow the leading of the Lord. Why? Because it says, draw near to his salvation. We never know what's on the, what's on the other side of our obedience. You know, like the word says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Choose to obey. Even if it hurts, we already said self-denial is important in this walk with Christ. So choose to obey. Choose to follow the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's go to the next one. I think it's right here. Oh, all right. We have come to the end. Y'all got, got some homework to do. We're going to all do this in two. Oh, okay. Yeah, it went by really fast. Okay. All right, so we are going to search the scriptures for an example of the manifestation of the word of wisdom. Um, but also, I want to add that there are, oh, Pastor Yofi has one. Do you want to share yours now or later? Well, we're going to open up the floor for oh, discussion. I, I, I think I'll let everybody else uh, say things. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. Well, we'll, we'll open up the floor and then, um, for the next uh, 15 minutes, we'll have that discussion um, and talk about the word of wisdom or anything that stuck out to you today. But go ahead. Um, um, Gail, Gail, Adam, real quick. Can, mm -hmm. you, can you finish with this part? Um, when we get off, I just want to say this before I forget. Please put it in the thread, announcements and assignments thread. Yes. Amen. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right. Give the instructions. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, search your scriptures for, the, for an example. I'm just stuttering all over my words. Yes. For an example of the manifestation of the word of wisdom. Um, also, even you may have even had your own personal experience. Amen. Whether the Lord has given you one for yourself. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you want to share with somebody else. I don't know if that's personal information or not. 
or someone has given you one. If you want to share, that's fine. We can filter it. Filter it, you know, give some different characters. I don't know. Um, but definitely we want you to search your scriptures. We want you to start off with searching the scripture first mm -hmm. because this is a Bible study. Amen, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and then be prepared to share your reference to the next class, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to put it in the chat in the thread so mm -hmm. you don't forget. And then so next class, we're going to um, go into word of uh, word of knowledge. It's going to be faith. and maybe faith. Yeah, I think we can do for our next session. We can tackle two or more of them. We're going to review. We are going to hit that. You know, we're educators. So we're going to do a little reviewing at the beginning of class, at the beginning of class. And then so go, don't tuck and hide and then go into word of knowledge and then maybe faith if time permits. All right. There was a nice 45 minutes of conversation. Does anybody have anything that stuck out to them? Something that was said or they feel um, based on what we've talked about thus far? Hopefully you learned a little something. I hope so. We did. Oh, we did. Yeah. Amen.